Did you know that an electric eel is capable of producing nearly four times the voltage of the home plug socket? And that this South American monster can finish off a horse? Many people know that the electric eel generates voltage, but this fish is much more unusual and interesting than you can imagine. In this episode, I'll tell you interesting facts about this magneto from the animal world and show you what it can do in action. Electric Eel What do you think would happen if a ferocious predator, say a caiman, a South American alligator, wanted to eat and chose an electric eel for dinner? Will it win? Will it get a huge discharge? Or will it be much more disastrous for the willful and hungry caiman? Think about it. We'll come back to that question a little later. Electrophorus electricus, also commonly known as the electric eel, is a rather unusual fish. I would say even more than unusual, it's extremely dangerous. Can you imagine that an electric eel can generate a voltage of up to 860 volts and a current of up to 40 milliamperes? It's incredible, isn't it? The first detailed description was made in 1729. Naturalists did not immediately believe that it was electricity that struck the fish. It was assumed that electric eels, in some mysterious way, froze their prey. But in June 1772, a member of the Royal Society, John Walsh, proved that the electric eel uses electricity to stun their victims. But why do these animals have this ability at all? Why does an electric eel need voltage? First, the electric eel uses electrical discharges to attack, to paralyze or kill its prey, which mainly consists of small fish and other small animals. Moreover, the electric eel also uses its electrical superpowers as a method of aggressive defense. By the way, the discharge generated by the electrical organs of this fish can also be weak, up to 10 volts, which the electric eel uses for electrolocation, something similar to echolocation in bats. The average length of an electric eel is 1 to 1 and a half meters, and the maximum length reaches 2 and a half meters. They usually weigh up to 20 kilograms. What's interesting about the structure of electric eels is the electrical organs, which occupy about four-fifths of the body length. By the way, it'll be curious to compare an electric eel to an electric ray because it has a similar ability as well. Electric rays are common all over the world, but only in temperate and tropical waters. The amount of current generated by these rays varies from species to species. The Atlantic torpedo, for example, can produce discharges of 220 volts, but for most species, this figure is much lower, ranging from 5 to 40 volts. Such is the difference with the electric eel. Is electric eel an eel? Despite the presence of the word eel in the name of the animal, and despite the external similarity, it is by no means a relative of the common European eel. The electric eel is a fish, which in fact is a member of the order Gymnotiforms, and it's more closely related to the catfish than to the European eel. The electric eel was previously thought to be the only species in the genus Electrophorus, but in 2019, two more species were discovered classified in the genus. Electric eels inhabit northeastern South America, including the Amazon and Orinoco River basins. The usual ways of catching these creatures are extremely difficult because they tend to burrow deep into the silt of marshes and rivers. Therefore, there was a very unusual way to catch them. Fish with Horses this unusual method was first described in the diary by the German scientist Alexander von Humboldt. It happened in 1800. The famous naturalist, who made an expedition to Latin America, was literally fascinated by these mysterious creatures. He witnessed locals catching electric eels on live horse bait. So far, it sounds incomprehensible, but if you think about it, there wasn't much other ways at the time. The fishing was as follows. The horses were driven into the water and waited for the electric eels to jump out and attack. By treading on the muddy bottom with their hooves, the horses would frighten the fish, which in turn would attack and electrocute them. Thus, having exhausted all their charge, electric eels became easy prey. In general, as the naturalist wrote, fishermen assured that the discharge of even a large electric eel was not enough to kill a horse. However, in his diary, von Humboldt noted that after a few minutes, two horses still died, being in the water unconscious. So. How exactly do electric eels emit such powerful electric charges? What can happen to a person after such a powerful electric discharge? And will that caiman I mentioned in the beginning survive? Stay tuned to find out the answers to these questions. The best part is ahead. Fake or not? Von Humboldt's description of electric eels attacking horses was considered a telltale for many years. 
The attacking skills of these animals were thought to have been greatly exaggerated. However, not so long ago, biologist Ken Catania of Vanderbilt University in Tennessee, USA, has accidentally confirmed the correctness of Alexander von Humboldt. The scientist conducted a series of experiments. He placed electric eels in different tanks along with a rod to measure current. The fish attacked this rod, but not underwater but in the air in a jump. The electrical impulses emitted by the fish reached hundreds of volts, and the current strength was almost one amp. Catania also submerged replicas of a crocodile's head and a human arm in aquariums and observed similar results. The conclusion was simple. For an electric eel, it made no difference what creature to defend against. It attacked everything indiscriminately. Such a dangerous electrical fiend. The scientists suggested that the aggressive behavior appeared in electric eels because they cannot avoid danger in most cases. Also, Catania tried to explain why electric eels make jumps despite the danger of such a strategy. All because a land predator may not dive into the water to catch an electric eel and thus defense in the water is not entirely effective. The animal may simply wait until the fish uses up its electrical charge and grab it without harming itself, as has happened to horse hunters. How is the current obtained? An interesting fact is that, unlike its underwater congeners, the electric eel breathes not only oxygen dissolved in water, but also in atmospheric air. For this purpose, it has to surface every 15 minutes, or even more frequently, to breathe in the next portion of air. This is possible because of the large amount of a special kind of tissue of the mouth cavity punctuated with blood vessels. If the electric eel's access to atmospheric air is cut off, it will start suffocating. So the entire body of an electric eel is covered with special organs that consist of special cells, electrocytes. These cells are sequentially connected with each other by means of nerve channels. In the front part of the body is positive charge and in the back part is negative charge. That's why a so-called potential difference is formed. Weak electricity is formed at the very beginning and passing sequentially from organ to organ, it gains strength in order to then hit the victim as effectively as possible. The electric eel generates discharges of varying strength by means of three types of electrical organs. As I said before, they occupy about four-fifths of the length of the fish. High voltages are generated by hunters and main organs, and small currents for navigational and communication purposes are generated by Sachs organ. The main organ and hunter's organ are located at the lower part of the electric eel's body, and Sachs organ is located in the tail. To date, few cases of human deaths after encountering an electric eel are known. Only large individuals can cause serious harm. The effect of the current of smaller individuals causes unpleasant and very painful sensations. Nonetheless, numerous electrical discharges can lead to respiratory or heart failure, which can cause a person to drown even in shallow water. Attacks For example, this footage shows that after trying to touch the electric eel, the young man abruptly bounces back and clearly feels pain in his hand. Don't underestimate this fish. And here the curious dog clearly wanted a thrill, but how is it supposed to know that the creature in front of it was emitting some serious discharges? One electric discharge and the poor dog, whining, ran as far away as possible from this strange creature. And now, finally, back to the caiman, a powerful and ferocious predator. In this video, we see how the black caiman chose an electric eel as its prey and clearly missed out. Instead of dinner, it received hundreds of electrical discharges. It becomes paralyzed and begins to convulse. But since the electric eel takes some time to recharge, it saves the poor reptile's life. When it comes to its senses, the caiman immediately runs away from its unpleasant opponent. However, not everyone is so lucky. And if the predator wants an electric eel as a prey and goes ahead, as a rule, it turns out badly for it. This reptile clung to the electric eel but got a lot of electrical shocks in return, which were fatal. You've already realized that in its unusual environment, the electric eel is quite aggressive. It can attack without warning even if there's no threat to it. If something living gets in the range of its force field, the electric monster will not hide or swim away. If an electric eel appears on the way, it's better to get out of the way. You shouldn't swim closer than three meters to it. This is the main range of the electric eel's force field. That's all, guys. Would you like to see an electric eel with your own eyes? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and see you later.